my YouTube friends, your VTuber is live. But is it really alive? Right now, your avatar probably looks like a statue that just kind of breathes. If you want to stand out on YouTube, you're probably going to want more. I know I did. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use animations completely for free and inject them into your VTuber using Wurardo. We're gonna fix our face animation so it looks like we're actually talking when we talk, add accessories and backgrounds, build custom toggles, unique poses, and make your character react to your stream with hotkeys. No animation skills are required. It's time to get your avatar moving, so you know what? Let's get to it! So I don't know about you, but when I first set this up, I just set it up so that everybody could see how it's done. But I was pretty disappointed with how the mouth moves. It doesn't really follow along with how your mouth actually moves. It's pretty disappointing, as you can see right here. But I did find a way to fix this, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's start there. What we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our blueprints. And we want to start with our face tracking blueprint. And this is going to look really confusing, right? There's, there's, there's a lot here, it looks like. But what we're going to do is we're going to go over here towards the end. We're going to zoom in. And what we're looking for is this generate idle head animation right here. And we want to just trace that back to the smooth blend shape list. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and break this node right here. And we're going to put a node in between these two that's going to help us to shape our face better. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here into search and we're going to type lip sync and you can see right here generate lip sync an animation that's what we're looking for we'll just drag this over here and boom there we go so basically this is going to get your blend shape list from here and it's going to output it to the blend shape list here so we're all plugged in now all we have to do is fix this so it does what we want it to do so we're going to drop this down and select our microphone whether you have a stereo or mono, whichever. You can adjust the voice threshold and we could do that later. But you could see here, we've got basically our vowels, A, E, I, O, U. What we wanna do is set those up so that it reads them down here properly. That way, it will be able to basically move your mouth in proper ways. So when we expand these, you could see that we've got the name of the vowel right here and a blend shape. So how do we figure out what these blend shapes are? Well, before we get to our blend shapes to tell what the shapes are for each of these sounds, we've got to calibrate our sounds. And this is lots of fun. So if we click the calibrate button right here, it tells you A, E, U, E, O are the sounds we're going to calibrate. And you could drop this down and mess around, but this works. We're going to click OK. And basically, you could see right here, we want to be speaking and hold our sound for one second. No more, no less. And then click Stop Calibration. So you want to start your vowel, hit Start Calibration, and then stop your vowel so it has basically a point of reference. So all you do is, ah, uh, and there we go. It's calibrated. We're going to come down here to the I. E, U, E, O. And we should be calibrated. And we'll name this, sure. That's spelled wrong. It'll work. And we're going to go down here. And if I go ah, uh, you could see uh, 100%. E, U, E, O. So now it's recognizing our vowels, right? And you can see when we talk, it'll bounce in and out between all of the different vowels, but that's perfect. Now we have what we want to be able to go ahead and activate our blend shapes. So how do we get our blend shapes? Well, let's go into here. We could see there's a place for the blend shape right here. Well, we kind of have these already built into our character. So let me show you. We're going to go over here into assets. We're going to go to character and we're going to come down here and we're going to go into our expression thing. We have our expressions, but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to make one and we're going to delete this later. This is just so we can kind of see what we're working with here. And then we want to select our expression and we want to enter it. So that checks it 
So right now, it's just going to show us what the expression is. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to go to our blend shapes. And right now it's empty, so we want to click the plus and then we want to find the blend shape that we're looking for. Select our target mesh shape, which is our face, and then we want to select our blend shape. So any one of these that we select is going to show up on the face of the character, right? Well, if we scroll down here, you're going to see these right here. So mouth, there's ah, right? That's what we're looking for. So we've got our blend shape here. We just want to copy the name. We just need this name. We're going to go back into our blend shapes and we're going to paste that name. And all we have to do is do this for all the rest of them. So A is done. Come back over here. Paste that same blend shape in and we'll just change it to I. Do the same here and change it to U. Come down here to E. Paste it in again and go with E. And then we just have O. And you can see it's still not really working the way we want, but that is because we still have it active right here. So what we want to do Let's just go back up here. We're going to exit the expression and then we're just going to delete that expression. And there we go. Look at how much more active our mouth is. Look at how much more expressive it is. That pretty much fixes it. Now it's going to look like we're actually talking. Pretty awesome. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is how we can add accessories, basically. We have our character, and maybe we want him to have a hat, some glasses, something like that. We're going to click the plus, and we're going to go into prop. And now we can go down here, and you can look at the prop folder. So it shows you all kinds of different props, stuff that's already included. You know, microphones, roses, different stuff like that. So there's lots of stuff already in here, and it's pretty easy to use. So let's just uh, come down here. We'll go with Al. So we now have an owl where do we want to attach it to character one and which bone do we want to attach it to so we're going to go with a human body bone we're going to attach it to our left shoulder and so now we can take a look at what our owl looks like and right now he is on my neck it's not what we're looking for so we go up here to our position and we can move him to wherever we want and now he's doing his thing right so you could see how this is easily able to attach a hat or whatever you want. So maybe we don't want him attached there. Maybe we want him attached to our head. Boom. So you can see it's inside our head right now. All we have to do is go to our position and move it to where we want it. So we'll move it out. Then we will move it up. And we will move it back over. And so now we've got an owl on our head. <laughs> and that's no different than a hat, right? It'll turn. It'll do whatever. And there we go. And then the transform tool right there, you can turn that off by just clicking on that once you have it where you want it. So we can add more props. We can just click this plus, go to props, select our character once again. And uh, so the transform attachment, uh, the character, and let's attach something to our human body bone and we'll attach it to our hand right and then we can we can change the way that our our hand is set up so we'll just leave it open right and then we just need to select what we want so these are pretty cool uh, if we go with something like star right and we can move this out when i move my hand around you can see it'll co it'll create these little thingies now, i don't have it have it calibrated right now or whatever but looks pretty awesome and obviously this hand doesn't do anything but we could attach one to that hand we could also go down here and we can attach a microphone. So boom, now we got a microphone in our hand. And you can pretty much use any kind of prop or anything like this. It's just really cool. So that's how you attach any of the props. You can go ahead and remove your props by selecting them and then just clicking on the minus right here to remove the prop. And there we go, and remove the prop. Now you can also use these props and have this enable, disable, used on a hotkey or something like that by going into blueprints and setting it up. Which means that you can use props and that sort of stuff to trigger events in your live stream, like a super chat or something like that. Really, really cool. If you guys want me to tell you more about how that's possible, let me know about it in the comments. Then I also want to show you about environments. Right now, we are just on a black screen. Makes it really easy to put it into OBS and remove our background and basically do video gaming and stuff. But if we wanted to have our character in some sort of environment during a cutscene or maybe just a talking head scene where we have a cool background environment, there are a couple of different things that we can do. So we're just gonna leave him like this and we're gonna go down here to our menu and we're gonna add a new scene. And let's just call this scene BG for background. Click OK and boom. So now we've got a background and we're gonna just go through the character setup thing because it's easier. And yep, yeah, we wanna do that. 
that and we want to go ahead and click OK and the motion capture is fine and all this stuff should be set up the same as your other camera so we're just gonna click OK and it's gonna use media pipe and do all that stuff we're gonna click OK and yes we want to import expressions and yep those are the expressions and instead we want to pick an environment now you can go down here and you can select the environment you want and you know there's a couple here classroom edge ruins you can go online and find some free ones where you know you could download the environment and boom there we go and okay and so now we have an environment pretty cool so what we want to do maybe is switch back and forth from this environment to our other one so we're going to go into blueprints right here and we're going to click the plus we're going to add a new blueprint and the first thing we're going to do is go down here and we're going to find inputs and we're going to go with on keystroke pressed and we're going to drag this over here and we could just select a keystroke so we're going to go down here and we're going to select Q control so control Q and then we just got to go down here a little farther and we're going to drag in load scene and we're going to connect up these and we want to go down here and select our default scene which is the scene without our background so now when we hit our control Q it's going to switch us over to our other scene. Now you can see the one small problem with this is that it takes a while. It switches and then it has to load the media pipe and it's not moving my face or doing anything until the media pipe loads. So then on this side, all you need to do is go back into your blueprints and you would go down and create a new blueprint and basically do the same thing. I have this set up so that it goes to studio, but we might wanna set up the same one so it goes back to our little classroom. We would put on keystroke pressed and we're gonna use the same keys. So this would be Q and it would be control and load scene and just select our background scene control Q and it will automatically take us to our classroom scene now you could see what the problem can be because we didn't save it and I restarted this and it's no longer here so that is the one thing that you want to make sure that you do is save constantly in this program so anything that I showed you today you got to save constantly and I'll show you how to do that in a second let's go ahead and set this back up and we want to go to to our default scene and we want to do control and Q and then we want to save this so we're gonna go here and we're going to save our scene now in this new scene if we go into our face tracking media pipe I can just show you right off the bat we do not have our mouth tracker in here which is why it looks so bad so you've got to individually add your mouth tracker in each one but to save this you go in here and you save the scene now if we hit control Q it'll take us back over to here and once this loads up then our mouth starts tracking again properly but again if you don't save your face tracking information um, like I saved it here you're in trouble so after you make any changes at all just make sure you go in here and you save the scene now you can set this up so that when you're changing scenes in OBS you you use the same keys and that way when you switch scenes here they'll switch scenes in OBS and you can have your entire background the whole nine yards in there. All right, the last thing I wanna show you guys is how to give ourselves a little bit of movement. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and just move our character around a little bit. So you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, and then you can hold down the mouse wheel to kind of move them around on the screen. So we're gonna get them all in frame like that. Then we're gonna go back over here, and what we're gonna do is go back into our blueprints. And we're gonna go ahead and click the plus down here to add a new blueprint and we can rename it. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and select it, go down here and rename it to poses. And what we're gonna do is go over here and type animation and we wanna play character idle animation. So we'll just drag this in here and I'm gonna zoom out using the mouse wheel and I'm gonna add a couple of these. All right, so we've got our idle animations there. And the other thing that we wanna do is add an input so we can scroll down to that that's pretty easy to find and we want to on keystroke pressed and we'll need one for each of these and let's start out with our top one here you could just connect it up and we'll select the key that we want and for this I'm just going to use the number keys so we'll come down here to the numpad and we'll do numpad zero then we just have to select our character and we have to select the animation now we can click here and it lists a whole bunch of animations but what we want to do is double click the preview gallery this kind of shows us what the animations kind of look like 
So let's start with this point finger one. We could just double click it and it puts it in there. And we have a couple of different settings. So we've got our transition time. In other words, how long it takes to get from our standard animation to this one. And then we've got our easing. You know, whether you want to restart it if it's playing uh, or reset if it's playing. And then when you reset it, what animation does it go back to? So this would be generic. This is like our standard animation, like what we see right here and then reset the root motion. Um, so basically you can control this by using the zero key. It will turn it on and off. So there we go. On, off, on, off. We can adjust the transition time so it's faster. So I think this move needs to be pretty snappy. So we'll make it fast. And there we go, we've got our first animation. Our character is moving. We're gonna come down here to the second one. We're gonna connect this up and we're gonna set it to numpad and we're going to select our character then we're going to select our animation and in this case we're going to do a little dance we're going to add some movement so you could do sitting and lying and all kinds of stuff um, but we've got a bus load of different dances that we can perform and so what i'm going to do is grab one of these we're going to do this medium rhythm dance right here just going to double click on it and we can hit control pad one and we can see what our little guy's doing look at him He's going freaking ham. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So there you go. Now you can trigger these obviously using the keyboard and you can use these as redeems. If you get a super chat or something, it could trigger dances like this or pointing or whatever other kinds of moves. And there are hundreds of different moves that are pre-programmed in. You can actually set this up so it can be a redeem. Now, if you're interested in me showing you how to do that, let me know about it down in the comments. Now, putting together something like a dance video is the perfect way to set it up as a transition to mask if you were going to do something like this transparent one and then you wanted to transition to a talking head because as I showed you before the talking head one where you might use a background has some time where it takes a little while to go ahead and get the media pipe up and while it does that it doesn't have any movement at all but you could easily record a dance segment like this with a fun background and use that as a transition in between your gaming session and your talking head session so that you could actually transition and no one would ever know that it takes a couple of seconds for it to connect up. So that's probably the strategy that I would use. Now, if you might be interested in me showing you how to set up a video like that, that you can use as a transition, let me know about it in the comments because I'm interested in making more content about this, but only if you guys are interested in seeing it. So we can stop our little guy from dancing just by going ahead and re-clicking that numpad one. He comes right back to center and has the standard pose. So let's say we wanted him to to come back to a different pose we can do that there are man poses women poses movement poses there are so many different poses here it's actually pretty crazy and of course we can select here so we can see the animation i'm going to come down here to the bottom and let's see here you can see you've got all kind of fun animation poses with running and all sorts of different stuff so here's the male poses let's say we wanted to do this one right here as our return pose so Instead of going back to our generic pose, it's going to go to that one. So if we click our one, it'll do our dance. And then when we're done, well, there we go. We go to the folded arms. And then if we wanted to get back to our generic pose, we can go to the point and then boom, it'll go back to generic. So we could even set it up so that we have different generic poses, like the number one pose here with our arms crossed or the just the generic pose or any other pose. It's pretty easy to set these up to do it however you want. And if we wanted to change this back to generic, all we have to do is go ahead and search for it. And there we go. And now when we press one, we'll do our dance. We press one again, we go back to our generic pose. It's really that easy. This node system looks really complicated and there is so much that you can do with it, but it really isn't that complicated. Uh, the other piece that you can do easily with this is Stream Deck. So we can do a Stream Deck trigger. We can drag this in there and use it instead of a keystroke press and you just have to give it the receiver name and you're all set. You can have your Stream Deck trigger these if you'd like. There are so many different ways that you can use these idle animations and pretty much anything else in the blueprint area. It's a lot of fun. Now I asked a lot of questions in this video about what you wanted to see in the future. So let me know about it down in the comments. 
Anytime you can say anything down there, it really does help me out. And if you're not sure how to get these animations in OBS, you should check out this video. And if you're not even sure how you can build your own free avatar that we used in Wurardo, well, check this other video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.